and today is a turn of Artist of the Year for the National Gospel Music Awards. Uh, she won the Artist of the Year for that award 2020. And it's great to catch up with you, Celestine Donko. Good morning. Good morning. I trust you're doing well. I'm doing perfectly fine. Is Corona treating you well? Ah, we can't complain. <laughs> I, I see you're cashing in as well. Um, by the grace of God, it's, it's, some things are working, yeah. Okay, so before, before COVID-19, were you into the production of hand sanitizers and all the things that you're selling now? Yes, um, I've been in the detergent business for the past five years. Oh, you've kept that on a low? Yes, um, <laughs> yeah, on the low, because, you know, I travel a lot and I'm not stable. So, and when I leave the things in the shop, by the time I travel and come back, it's another story. So, wow. uh, it's been really on the low, but I've been doing this for the past five years. But you aren't doing sanitizers, you're just doing uh, other, other products. I did sanitizers, I did liquid soaps, bleaches, antiseptics, uh, shower gel, I do all that. But wow. In the uh, yeah, in those days, my, um, I mean, well-sold product was the Alata Seminar Shower. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And I, I see that uh, business is booming for you. This is your season to make a lot of money. By the grace of God. <laughs> then you have Myth Busters as well. I see that it's something that you're about to embark on. You are the gospel soldier and the soldier again for COVID-19. Yes, official COVID-19 gospel soldier. <laughs> Tell us about the myth busters. Okay, so the myth busters, I've really been thinking of what to do for people in these times, you know, aside the fact that I've been on the street giving, and I've also taught people how to make their own sanitizers. I've, I've been, really been thinking of what more can I give. So I, I chance on the truth every truth we need to know about COVID-19 on the World Health Organization, as uh, stated by the World Health Organization. So I thought these are important information that are actually not in our system. So let me use this opportunity and the brand I have to send out this information. So this is what Mythbusters is all about, to um, demystify some of the on the myth truth. that people have heard about exactly. COVID-19. And, exactly. and I've monitored your, your platform as well. You have been calling for, uh, you've been asking questions about the church. You're concerned that we are still having to do church from home and all that. Yeah. Yes. Um, my, I, 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 just, I was just thinking that, look, when you go to the market now, there is nothing like social distancing. Everybody is dead. I mean, when, there's nothing new. You, when you go to the market area, you don't feel like there's COVID-19 out there and people are doing something exceptional to, um, you know, to, 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 stay, to stay safe. There's nothing there like that. So I'm like, well, if the president has lifted ban on, I mean, have allowed us, we can go to the market and all that, then why not the church? Because I think the church gathering is even more organized than what the market is. When we say we want to put measures in place, like everybody should wear masks, uh, right at the entrance of the church, they are soap to wash your hands, and then the sitting uh, arrangement will be well spaced, then we should be allowed to have service as well. But you, you, you think that every church will comply? Maybe your church, which is ICGC, might comply to that uh, or with that. What about all the other people who are even still not, you know, well educated on COVID-19? I think I think they will because I um I, I don't think seeing the president uh, lock down the churches for gathering I don't think there has been much violation of that and so the same way when they are advised to take some precautions they will adhere to it. But in the um, same breath, on your page again, you are asking what people have actually missed uh, from church since uh, uh, we decided to do church online. Mm. Yes, I did. Uh, you know, <laughs> last Sunday I was at home and I just miss how I, I, I always minister at church during our second offering collection. Okay. Some way, somehow, that is mostly the time I minister. And I just miss that moment. 
So I thought of, you know, asking friends to get them talking about what they miss about church. And I had a lot of people saying I miss the choir, I miss the pastor's messages. And I personally miss how our pastor preaches and he makes a lot of jokes when he's preaching and the whole congregation bursts into loud laughter like that. I miss those moments. And I think this has given us the opportunity to also appreciate some of these beautiful things uh, we didn't really value. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then you, you decide to go on your page to give a response or to react to a post by Ms. Bell about the church, where she says, where are all the people who are healing uh, folks in, in the healing business? Now we need them to heal COVID-19 uh, uh, patients. And you said that that is blasphemy or blasphemous. Exactly. You remember in the Bible, the devil told uh, Jesus when he was tempted on the mountain that he should, he, if he claims to be the son of God, he should turn the stone into bread and eat, you know? And Jesus can easily do that. But he said, do not blaspheme, uh, do not tempt uh, God, and do not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's not just misspell. There are a lot of people making comments that are mockery comments, that are sarcastic comments concerning the church. Uh, the, the church or the power behind church has not lost its power. It has not lost what it, it represents. And we are all in a time where everything happening, God was, is also using to teach us some lessons. And so when I saw Miss Bell post that, Miss Bell is a very good friend of mine. I went to comment on her post and I told her that I love her so much, but there are such angle of communication is really dangerous. For her. So I chatted her on WhatsApp and I told her I'm going to screenshot her post and, and you know, uh, on my yes. page. Mm. Yes. And she was like, oh, cool, you can post it. And I told her if bloggers pick it up, she shouldn't take anything personal. We are all trying to learn something. And she was cool with that even before I posted that. So Oh, that's beautiful and, because a lot of people also ask that, why didn't you reach out to her personally? It's great to know that you did that privately before you came uh, to the public. I but did that before. I heard you say that there's a lot of things that we are learning, even as Christians, from what is happening now. You want to share with me what you have picked as a Christian from COVID-19 and all the issues around the church? Two things I have picked as a Christian and I want to advise every Christian to pay attention to, is the fact that we are the temple. Imagine if, uh, I mean, this scripture is in the Bible, and I believe most people know. But, you know, sometimes it's different to know something than to experience something. So I, I have known this scripture for a long time, but I'm now experiencing how important a temple I am. Um, and every Christian out there is a temple. So what we see at the church building that uh, we go there to worship at the temple is, is, is rather wrong. We are the temple. It is our presence in the building that makes it a church. And so it is important to see yourself as the temple of God. And so if God is looking down on the earth, he's looking at you and not the church structure. That is number one. And number two, the lesson I learned it is for the church to develop other ways of having services. I strongly advise the church that when we are out of this, we should train members on how to use Facebook, use social media handles, to, and, and even start doing midweek services online so that we would get members to get used to this. Because a lot of um, churches are struggling now on how to still uh, keep their members, communicate to their members, and send the word of God to them. And then, personally, as a musician, uh, a very important lesson I have learned is not to solely depend on music. Imagine how we've been locked down for like how long now? We're unable to go out and you know play shows, play shows, you know. And if this has been your only source of survival, then trust me, some musicians are indoors crying right. And I want to advise all of us to, as we are indoors and as we are, uh, we don't have the liberty to go about, this is the time to think and restart it. Think of something extra, two or three extra things you can do aside the music so that in the future when something like this happens, you would be comfortable. Um, 
you know, in it, no matter what. Okay, so we're going to play uh, one of your songs. I, I, I wish I would have played my favorite, which is Adichie Munsem. I've told you that several times. I think this is the time we're supposed to be even playing that song because as it stands now, only God knows what will happen tomorrow. I don't remember only I tell you, I tell you, but talking about Agbebolo, um, what's, what's the latest with you and Reverend Obofo? We saw a lengthy post from your husband uh, after he had used your song Agbebolo for the 31st night uh, advertisement. Uh, we've not heard after that post was pulled down, we're told that you guys were going to meet in court on Wednesday. As of that time, the post was post, uh, made. What, what's the latest? Um, I have I have maintained the fact that this issue is between my management and Obofo. As much as it is my name that is behind the song, um, I am a songwriter, I am a singer, but when it comes to the investment part of the song, my husband invested his money and all that. So I would really love this to still be between my management and Obofo. I cannot really say much about that. That's okay, but when the, the post, the story came up, uh, I monitored on Ghana Web, it had about 43 comments. I went to the comment section, and most of the things that were, were frequently posted by concerned people is, you're a gospel musician, a pastor uses your song. Does it become an issue? Because people sing your song on a daily in church. You don't go after them saying, you've used my, my song without you know, making me aware. Is it that you have an issue with the brand? What exactly is the issue? Like I said, and I'll repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> I am the singer, and there is somebody who invests in the song. The moment somebody invests in the song, before the song became big, somebody spent money on recording. Somebody spent money on promoting it. And so some investment has gone in there. And so the moment that investment is there, then I don't have full capacity on the song. Um, as Celestine Donko. And so this is strictly an issue between Celestine Donko's management and Obofu. And but I would like it to be... To remain like that. But you're the first yes. we see. You know, before we see Edwin Donko, we see Celestine Donko. You're the one we know. And so you're the one who get the attacks, you know? I know, and I've been getting it. By the end of the day, I know that there are some, you know, mature people out there who understand how copyright issues, I mean, work. And so it's not really an issue that is really a concern to me. Um, but the most important thing for communication I want to give right now is that I, I am the artist. Mm -hmm. I write the song and I have to get somebody to invest in it. And so if the investor feels that um, his product or his business is being you know, tempered with, he has every right to fight it. And so this is management whom over for issue. Please leave me out of this. I'm just an ordinary artist. I hear you. I hear you. But you are not in court yet or you are in court. Or I should still leave you out of that. <laughs> just leave me out. But I know it, they have had a couple of meetings with him. And uh, primarily the concern was when uh, this whole thing came to light, the response we got from over for was what took this issue this far. Those who know me very well know that this is not my line. Like going to court is not my is not my line at all. I would like to be seen as a gospel minstrel and period that as such. And but when you know but even Bible say that a soft answer uh, calms down tempest. But when you feel that somebody has violated or stepped on your boundary and the person gives you a harsh response, like you can go to hell, you can go to court, then you also push even a quiet person to react. And so, um, like I said, uh, my management and above all are handling this thing. And behind the scenes, I'm doing my best so that at the end of the day, um, everybody will feel respected and everybody will feel treated well. And I, I, I know that this will not really be a big issue. So if you are watching me out there as a fan, trust me, we have this under control. It will never come out with a negative impact. So just uh, count down. Relax. Thank you very much, Celestin Donko. It must be refreshing working with your husband, getting him have your back and you know, do all the managerial things whilst you concentrate on the music. We are glad that you made time to speak to us this morning. My love to the family. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to encourage everybody out there to keep washing their hands and um, using the nose mask. And if you don't have anything important doing it now, just stay home. And this is the most credible 70% alcohol-based hand sanitizer. I'm sending you a receipt right away. <laughs> <laughs> So grab one and stay safe. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Alessandro.